Okay, we're going, going to continue our discussion on forces and start talking about friction. And friction is defined as a force that opposes the relative motion between two surfaces. Really what I'm trying to say is that it keeps objects from sliding. So you have two surfaces, you could have a box on a, on a, on a floor, and uh, you have the surface of the box and the surface of the floor. And friction either can keep it from sliding, or when it is sliding, it's trying to slow it down. Um, so it, it's a force that opposes motion or the relative motion between two surfaces. So what I show in here is I have two uh, surfaces, and they're rough. So the roughness between the two objects, or between the two surfaces, is going to keep them from sliding. Now we have kinetic friction and we have static friction. Now kinetic friction, the surfaces are moving. So you're trying to move a box across the floor and there is kinetic friction. It's the friction of motion. And then there's static friction where surfaces are not moving. So it's stationary or static. So we're going to have an object here. We're going to have a force acting on it applied to the right and then a friction acting on it to the left. draw both examples, uh, one for kinetic and one for uh, static. And basically in these two situations, what I'm trying to refer to in kinetic friction, if I apply a force to the right and friction acts to the left, and the object is moving and it has some acceleration, then I'm pushing harder uh, than friction and it's allowing it to move. On the other, static friction, if I apply a force to the box, and friction is pushing back and the box does not move, the box is frozen in place, I am not pushing hard enough to overcome the stationary friction that is there. So what static friction is, is objects, the object is frozen in place. So as long as the object is frozen in place, then I can't move it. Uh, and these are the basics of friction. So we're going to kind of go further into all this. So we're going to talk about static friction. I'm going to give you an example where I have a 10 kilogram object, a 10 kilogram block, and it's going to have a maximum static friction of 60 newtons. And then we're going to do a what happens scenario. What happens first if I do this, and what happens second if I do this? So, what happens first if no force? is added. So we're going to have a box, 10 kilograms, it's on the ground, it has weight, it has normal force, and I don't push on it. So then the object is not accelerating. Weight and normal force will cancel each other out, the object doesn't move, uh, and therefore there's no friction. A lot of people are sitting there looking at the problem that has 60 newtons sitting there, that max static friction is 60 newtons. Well, if I don't apply a force, then friction isn't working. It's not acting on it. Friction is more, static friction is a uh, reactionary force, which means that if I don't push on it, it doesn't push back. If I push at 10, it'll push back at 10. If I push at 20, it'll push back at 20. Uh, if I push at 60, it'll push back at 60. It's reactionary. Now the second one, what I'm going to do is I'm going to push with 40 newtons. So I have my 10 kilogram object, I have weight, I have normal force, and they're going to be equal and opposite, so they're going to cancel each other out. I'm going to push with 40 newtons, and we have option one, where friction, static friction is 60 newtons, and option two, where static friction is 40 newtons. There's option one, there's option two. Now the object does not move if the applied force is not greater than the static friction. Object does not move if the applied force is less than the static friction.
Static friction is considered to be reactionary, which we just went over. So if I push with 40 newtons, option two is correct. It can push with 60 newtons. It's capable of doing so, but it's going to push with 40 newtons. It will only push back as hard as I push on it. So taking those two options, I recognize that static friction is 40 newtons. So if net force is zero and acceleration is zero, then the object could be at rest and it could be at constant velocity. That's the other thing we got to discuss. What we're saying here is when acceleration is zero, we have learned that if acceleration is zero and net force is zero, that the object can have an at rest or it can be in constant velocity motion. It is the idea of Newton's first law. An object in motion will stay in motion, or an object in rest will stay in rest unless an unbalanced force acts on it. If the forces un are unbalanced, we will have some type of net force. We could have 40 newtons applied to the right and 20 newtons applied to the left. Our net force would be 20 at that point, where you add up the two forces. One's positive, one's in the opposite direction, so therefore it would be negative, and you have a net force of 20, then the object is accelerating, it's no longer moving at a constant velocity. If the net force is zero, then at that point, there is no acceleration. And if we're moving at a constant velocity, we're not accelerating. If we're sitting at rest, we're not accelerating. So both options are available. And we'll continue to go into this further. So let's talk about the things friction depends on. Friction depends on how rough the surface is and how hard the surface pushes on it, presses back. We know what, how hard a surface presses on, and that's called normal force. We know what that is called. But we don't know what surface roughness is called, and we're going to start calling it the coefficient of friction. And it's represented with a mu. Uh, mu is a Greek letter. Um, it's basically a goofy looking M with a tail on it. So the rougher the surface, the greater the value for mu. Um, as you increase the surface roughness, that mu is a number. That's really all it is. It's a coefficient. It's a constant. So the greater it becomes. So if it's not very great, it would be 0.1. If it's really a great rough surface, it would be like 0.9 or, or higher. Um, and how we calculate that, frictional force is mu times F sub n, but there are two types of frictional force. Uh, there is static friction and there's kinetic friction. So we have to have two different coefficients. We have to have the coefficient of static friction, and we have to have the coefficient of kinetic friction. Both of them mu, but each of them will have a subscript that is like their adjective to the noun. So static friction, or static, uh, static mu and kinetic mu. And typically static mu is greater than kinetic mu. Uh, the force you need to overcome friction in order to get it moving is usually greater than what is needed to keep it moving. Um, so we're going to go into an example of that. Uh, a 5 kilogram block with a coefficient of static friction is 0.6 and the coefficient of kinetic friction is 0.3. How much uh, force applied do I need to move the object? So I'm going to have a 5 kilogram object that is 50 newtons uh, in weight, a normal force pu pushing back that is equal and opposite. I'm going to apply a force to the right. I'm going to have static friction to the left, which will be coefficient of static friction times the normal force. Knowing the equation for static friction, I can go ahead and calculate that to be 30 newtons. Because um, it's the coefficient of static friction, which is 0.6 times the normal force, and I get 30 newtons. Now, uh, there's, you know, there's a lot of people that will ask the question as to why uh, the normal force is, is part of the calculation instead of the weight. Uh, and a lot of people think the weight is pressing down on the floor and causing uh, the surface to be in contact with each other. Uh, 
Uh, the really is the reason the normal force is used is let's say we tie a rope to the box and to the top right hand corner. If we start pulling on it, we decrease the amount of surface from that corner. We're kind of lifting up at an angle. We decrease the amount of surface there is at that point. So therefore we've lessened the normal force, but the weight of the object has not changed. So you can imagine you, a box where the whole bottom of the box is in contact with the floor and then tilt that box where only the corner, where only the corner is being drug across the floor. The weight of the box did not change. The box is still has its weight, but how much normal force is being acted upon the object depends on how much of the object is on the ground. So we use the normal force to calculate the, the friction. So we have 30 newtons here for our static friction and the force applied they want to know how much we need to apply to the object force-wise to, to move it. And it must be greater than or equal to 30 newtons. If it's equal to it, the net force would be zero, the acceleration would be zero, and we could be moving at a constant velocity, or we could be at rest. But at that point, we are talking about it has to be how much do I need. I need the minimum would be equal to the static friction. It would be 30 newtons and I can do anything over that and I would overcome static friction the object would begin to move. So let's say I apply a force of 40 newtons which we know is greater than static friction. Static friction is 30. If I push harder than that the static friction cannot push harder than that. It's reactionary up to 30 newtons. So the max that static friction can push with is 30 newtons. So now I've pushed harder than that so I am now moving the object and static friction no longer exists once I'm moving the object. Static friction is only for stationary objects. So once the object is moving, I now have to apply the force of kinetic friction to the problem. So here I have a 50 Newton object, same exact object, same exact scenario, but now I'm pushing with 40 Newtons, and I'm going to have a friction acting against it. The friction action acting against it is kinetic. Is the force greater than 30 Newtons? Yes, it is. That's important. It's greater than 30 Newtons because that's all static friction can push with. So if it's greater than 30 Newtons, then the object is moving and therefore accelerating. So we now have to use uh, kinetic friction as our equation. So we do F sub K, and that is mu sub K times Fn. Mu sub K, or the coefficient of static friction, is 0.3. I multiply that by the normal force, which we know, and we get 15 newtons. So I have now pushed with 40 newtons, and kinetic friction is acting in the opposite direction with 15 newtons. So the net force equals ma, I write my two equations, and the net force equals the force applied minus the kinetic friction. And then I can combine those because they both equal net force. Plug in my numbers, 5 times a equals 40 minus 15, that comes out to 35 newtons equals 5 times a. I divide by 5 and the acceleration will be 7 meters per second squared. So at that point, once the object is moving, we have to make sure we understand this. If the object is, is in motion, we've overcome the amount of force or the amount of static friction that would keep it stationary. We've overcome that static friction force. We've pushed hard enough to get it moving. Now the object has to be accelerating. And then at that point, we use kinetic friction. And we can calculate the acceleration of the object by using kinetic friction and the force applied. Uh, remember why we use normal force? Because the box's surface, uh, how much of that surface is touching the floor or touching the other surface, but the weight of the object never really changes because even if it's in midair falling to the ground, free falling, that object still has the same amount of weight in free fall as it does if it's sitting on the ground. So we use the normal force because that's how much the surface is pushing back uh, on the object, and that is, the f that is important to our frictional force. Um, so we'll go over more of, the more of these examples in class, uh, and so it should become a little bit more clear from there.